right, so it starts off with Nathaniel, our introduction to him, who will end up being one of the twelve. He doesn't know Jesus yet, nor does he know the apostles yet. He is an architect. He's having a fight with the foreman about how it's being built. And all of a sudden, the building that he is designing collapses on itself, hurting people in the process. And he is fired. He then is lost, doesn't know what to do with his life, and can't get another job doing what he did, doing what he loves to do. And then he goes underneath this fig tree with his um, blueprints of synagogues that he wants to build, all that. He always dreamed of building synagogues. And he burns them underneath this tree. And he asks God, do you see me? I, I did all this for you. Because he sees it as, you know, I did all this for you, and this is what happened to me. Why? And he burns them. He burns his plans that he worked so hard on, his blueprints, everything. This was everything for him. And he burns it. And it turns to dust. And he doesn't know what else to do. And he decides to go home. And he just lays in bed. Confused. Lost. Upset. Wondering if his entire life was just a big waste. Meanwhile... The disciples are still getting to know each other, and they meet another one of the disciples, Philip. And I wish I could remember the actor's name who plays Philip. This guy is so positive, <laughs> and so... He, he always has a smile on his face. He's so... Yeah, positive is the best word I could say. He never looks upset or down or confused. No, he knows exactly who he is. He knows who the Messiah is. And he is happy to leave everything behind. In the same sense that everybody else is leaving their past behind. But Philip is not only embracing it, but he wants to share this with everyone. Not his past, but what he's doing. And at least that's how the character comes off, the way the actor is portraying it. And I love it. I think it's great. And it's funny, you know, I, I watch this show with my mom sometimes, and there are times when my mom will say, I don't see it, but my mom does. She always says, he looks very similar to Jonathan Rumi a little bit. <laughs> Long hair, beard, you know. Like, when him and Jonathan Rumi have a scene together... They almost look the same. My mom thinks so. I don't, but my mom thinks that. But she always says, like every time Philip comes on, she's like, is that Jesus? Oh, wait, no, 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 it isn't. Okay. So, um, so Philip joins the group and he says, uh, you know, Simon's a little hesitant. Uh, Simon's hesitant about everything because Simon, I think, is so happy that the Messiah is here. And he believes that he is the Messiah. He believes. But he doesn't like... Like, like, like he, he's, he's on guard all the time. You know, Philip walks into the group. They don't know who he is. Simon, at first, thinks he could be a spy because he doesn't want the Romans to get near Jesus. He doesn't want Jesus to be hurt. And Philip says who he is. Uh, apparently, he was there with Andrew when John the Baptist uh, was baptizing Jesus. 
It's when the dove came on Jesus' shoulder that God said, here, here is my son. So Andrew recognizes him, and Andrew gives him a big hug, and he's happy to see Philip there. And Simon's looking at this like he didn't know who he was, and James and John are there too, and they're like, oh, okay. So, so that happens. Matthew, on the other hand, is still adjusting. Um, like I said, a lot of most of this episode is the disciples getting to know each other, just like Thunder was. We had a lot of scenes where the disciples are getting to know each other, and I, it's going to be a recurring thing throughout season two and season three also, which I have seen, and probably throughout the rest of the series. But it's still an introduction because they still don't really know each other well yet. And that's what the show is about. It's really about them. Uh, it's about Jesus, too, because he is the chosen one, but Jesus is choosing his 12 apostles to do what he wants, and or what he asks of them, really. And what I love about Matthew in this is, by the way, Paras Patel uh, did that happy birthday shout out to me. I am so, I'm so happy you took the time out of your day to do that. I'm really um, grateful for that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And if you decide to watch this and show this to the cast members of The Chosen, that's even more grateful because <laughs> I never thought in a million years anyone working on the show would watch these. <laughs> but that's great. Um, I'm a fan too, obviously. You can tell. So, uh, Matthew, he's never done manual labor before. He's never, uh, he's never really done anything that these guys have done because he's, a, he's been a tax collector for a while. Uh, but he's very smart. And, you know, we have, we have a lot of conversations between Matthew and Philip and Matthew and Thaddeus. And Thaddeus and Philip are treating Matthew with respect, like, like a friend, even though Matthew just met these guys, they're treating him well. And Simon isn't. Because Simon doesn't trust him. You know, tax collectors have bled their people dry for a long time, and Matthew is a Jew, but he turned. And Matthew doesn't want to do that anymore. But Simon is still uh, holding back. You know, because he doesn't, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't trust him. Simon has a hard time with trusting him because the fact that a tax collector is in the group, Simon automatically believes that at some point he's going to betray the Messiah. And that also comes in a, in a moment later where Matthew is thinking about writing everything down that Jesus does and says because it's a good idea to have something to fall back on in case I forget something, because I don't want to forget anything. And he mentions this to Thaddeus and Simon over here, and Simon says, no, 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 I don't want you doing that. No, don't do that. And he says, why? And he says, I don't want you taking down every single thing that he's saying. If a spy comes in or the Romans come in, they're going to see that, and I don't want that. And Matthew's really fed up with the way he's been treated by Simon, so he tells Simon, he says, he tells him what Philip told him earlier, which is, we are not defined by our past, but by the fact that we follow in, in him, or something like that. And it makes Simon rethink a few things. He doesn't say anything, but it makes him rethink a few things, but he still agrees it's a bad idea. But Matthew decides to do it anyway. Obviously, because it's in here. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's funny. I was looking at the Gospel of Matthew and comparing it with the Gospel of John. And it's interesting because throughout the series, we see certain scenes where John is writing things down and Matthew is starting to write things down too. But what's interesting about Matthew is, and my dad has even said this when my dad was getting sober a long time ago, he said Matthew is very, the Gospel of Matthew is very descriptive. It's very precise. Because it talks about, because it quotes Jesus the most, the Gospel of Matthew. And it's interesting how the disciple Matthew is being portrayed in this show as, I want to say, I think on the spectrum, 
I think I've said that before. And that actually kind of makes sense because the character here in this show is portrayed as very good with numbers, very good with paying attention, and wants to do everything in a certain way, but wants to get it all down, like every single little detail down. And that makes sense because the Gospel of Matthew is written that way. I mean, it quotes Jesus the most. It talks about everything, every single little thing that Jesus does. The Gospel of John talks about talks about Jesus, obviously, yes, and so does Mark and Luke, but Matthew's very precise, the Gospel. So, yeah, it kind of makes sense in that way, how they're portraying the character in this show. So I like that. I really do. Um, and it makes me look at the Gospel of Matthew in a whole new way. So... Uh, yeah, so I really, really like that. So Matthew's trying to find his way in the group. Uh, he's learning manual labor. He's thinking more about, you know, you know, even Philip asks him uh, at the campfire when they're doing all this. Uh, Philip asks him, he says, so was it easy to leave everything behind? You know, because this is a tax collector. You left all that behind? You left your your house, your clothes, your, your money? At all? You left that all behind? Was it hard or was it easy? And Matthew says, no, it wasn't hard at all, really. It wasn't hard. And as I'm watching that scene, I remember thinking, you know what? Given the fact of what Matthew's been through, and again, we don't know everything yet at this point. We won't know until later down the line. But at this point, it kind of makes sense because in the episodes leading up to the moment where Jesus calls him, he's very lost. And everything else isn't doing it for him because of what's happened in his life. So the fact that when Jesus calls him, Matthew can feel it when Jesus calls him. He could feel Christ's presence that it's okay. I don't know what this is going to do for me, but it's okay because I don't know where else to turn to because I'm not getting anything out of this. Yes, I have a gift. Yes, I'm using it for the best way I know how to make a living for myself, but it's not getting me anywhere. I don't have friends. I don't have family. I don't have anything that, anything that God has blessed me with because these are material things. Yes, they're good, but they're not good in the sense that God is. In other words, God is going to be ever, God's goodness is everlasting. These material things only last for a certain period of time. And I think and in that moment in season one, episode seven, when Jesus calls Matthew, Matthew feels that. I could see that in, in the way the character is portrayed. But Jesus is also in the same way because Simon asks him, he says, do you even know this guy? And Jesus looks at him and he goes, yes, I do. Yes, I know him. I know him because I know his heart. I know what he, I know what he wants. And Matthew just like, like almost like in a trance in a way. And he's like, Okay, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. And so when Philip asks him this in this episode, he says, you know, was it was it easy or was it hard to give everything, leave everything behind to follow him? Matthew says, no, it, it really wasn't, actually. So I like that. Uh, and, of course, we also have uh, Mary Magdalene and Rhema. Uh, they want to learn more about Torah and Matthew knows a lot about Torah. He he uh, he actually says this to Philip. He skipped ahead when he was much younger, um, when he, when he was eight years old, I believe. Uh, so he know, so he knows a lot about Torah. And they start talking to Matthew, Mary Magdalene, and Rama, and they're talking to Matthew, and they say, um, "Is there any chance we could get a hold of some of the scrolls?" And Matthew's like, "I can copy them down for you." So you're like, well, that's that's a lot of copying. The scrolls are there's a lot in there, and Matthew says, well, I'm, uh, let me ask Philip. He would probably know. Like maybe he's got some some scriptures memorized that that are good that maybe we could use them to our advantage. And Mary Magdalene asks him. She says, why Philip? He says, well, he's nice to me. Him and Thaddeus. In other words, Matthew Matthew's having a hard time because not everybody in the group is kind to him. Like I said, I really love Matthew's story throughout this show. It's really good. So that's going on. And then, um, in fact, you know, it's funny. Jesus is barely in this episode. He doesn't come in until halfway through the episode. This is like an hour long, this one. So 
Jesus has a conversation with Philip uh, by the campsite, and and I love that scene. I love it. Um, you know, Philip introduced himself to Jesus, and Jesus remembers him. He's like, "Oh yeah, you were at the Jordan River when when John uh, baptized me with water. You were there with Andrew." And he says, "Yes, yes, I was there." And they start talking about, um, you know. Um, in fact, you know, it's funny. One of the things I love about that is Jesus says, I have, a, I have a question to ask you, and it's very short. And Philip's like, I have a response, and it's very short. And, the, like, like, at the same time, follow me, I will. <laughs> I love that. I, I was so, so good. And I remember watching that and thinking, okay, now Philip's in the group. Okay, so now we're up to five, six, seven, eight. Eight. I think we're up to eight. Is it eight now? Is it? No, it's nine. Nine. We're up to nine. Okay. So nine disciples. And um, Philip asked Jesus, he says, I have a friend, and I was wondering if I could ask him if he'd be interested in coming with us. And uh, Jesus says, actually, Jesus says something in this that I thought was really, really good. Um really interesting. He says, I don't know if this is in the Bible or not. It probably isn't. I think they wrote this in the show. But it says, uh, he said, um, if we don't make time for friends, we won't have any. Like that, oh, that was good. I really, I really enjoyed that. You know, you know, make time for friends. Because they have a lot of things they have to do the next morning. So Philip goes and knocks on the door and it's Nathaniel. And he's broken down. He's upset about his whole life. He doesn't know where, where to go. And Philip sits down with him. And he tells him. He says. The Messiah is here. He's here. I'm with him. He came from Nazareth. And Nathaniel starts laughing it off. He's like, oh, n nothing good comes out of Nazareth. Again, you know, so many people say that in this show. And then Philip says, I think this was, like, you know how in season one, get used to different was the big phrase? Season two, Philip says the big phrase. Uh, Nathaniel asks him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip looks at him and he says, come and see. <laughs> and there it is, come and see. I remember... Uh, you know, I've seen bumper stickers that have that on there. Uh, I think they've had T-shirts for the chosen that say "Come and see." It was that—that that was like the big catchphrase for season two. And uh, so Philip says that to him, and Nathaniel's like, "Okay, well, I got nothing else going on. All right." And he takes him to meet Jesus, and Jesus meets him. And Jesus looks at him and he says, "So you wanna, you wanna build synagogues, right?" And Nathaniel looks at him. He's like, "How do you know that? I never met you before. How do you know that?" And Jesus looks at him. He says, "You asked if anyone saw you under that fig tree. I, I saw you. I saw you under there." And he, just, and he just starts, like, tears coming down his face, like, oh, that was so, so good. And he believes that he's the Messiah. It, you know, even Nathaniel even asks him, he says, are you the son of, you're the son of God? He goes, mm hmm And Philip's, like, puts his hands in the air, he's like, I knew it, I knew it! <laughs> so now we have ten in the group. And, um... You know, Simon and Andrew come in and they tell they tell Jesus, "Oh, you know, your your you know, your words are spreading. It's going all around. Everybody's talking. You have a lot of people that are in line that want to be healed and they're waiting for you." And Jesus says, "Okay." And he turns around to Nathaniel. And he says, "So, you want to build something that's much greater?" And he goes, "Yeah." He says, "Can you start tomorrow?" <laughs> That's the end of the episode. And I love how, and you know, God, God does this. You know, he'll say, you know, the, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But usually when he takes something away, it means he's got something better for you. And 
sometimes we don't always know what that is. I, I don't know what that is. I don't. But I do know that if it's God's will, okay, God knows what he's doing. And God doesn't deceive. So that's comforting to know that. It's in here. So I Saw You, Season 2, Episode 2. I really like it. I think it's a good episode. It's a great introduction to the character of Philip and Nathaniel. And um, now that we're up to 10, uh, I've really, really enjoyed this one. I like where Matthew's story is going. I'm interested in seeing uh, where this show... Obviously, I've seen all the, I've seen all the episodes. I've seen seasons 1, 2, and 3 so many times. But it's been a while since I've watched them. So usually when I usually when I try to do these vlogs, I try to watch the episode right before because again I have the DVDs. But I really enjoyed this one. This one, it's funny. Originally when I first saw this episode, I wasn't too crazy about it except for that last scene when Jesus and Nathaniel have that conversation. That really spoke to me because I always felt that when I opened up to Jesus Christ, which was about three years ago. Like, I always wanted to make movies. Always wanted to make movies. I wanted to be like, you know, I wanted to make... I saw Jaws when I was eight years old. I always wanted to make films. And now it, it seems so small, you know, making movies. Because I, I really wanted to entertain people. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make people feel good. Because that's what, that's what movies do. They do. They entertain you for an hour and a half to two hours, sometimes three hours. And they make you forget about your stress. But when the, th when the, when the movie's up, you're right back in this. So it doesn't do much. It only lasts for a certain amount of time because the movie is only a certain amount of time. That's it. It doesn't go on forever. Jesus' love and God's love does go on forever. So making movies seems very small to me now. I don't know if that's what I'm called to do. It's what I wanted to do, but is it what God wants me to do? That is the big question here. And I don't know if that is what God wanted me to do or not. I don't know. I wanted it. But now I'm not so sure. So, you know, and that kind of theme runs in this episode, you know? Like, you want to do something all your life, you love doing it, but then something happens, and now you're lost. You don't know where to go. You're like, is this what I was supposed to do? Because I thought it was, but apparently it isn't. So where do I go from here? But God had something better for Nathaniel, and that is, you know, you wanted to build... You're an architect. You wanted to build buildings and structures and all that to praise God. Okay, I have a better way for you to use that gift. Same thing with Matthew. You're very good with numbers. You're very good with reading and writing. I, I have a better thing for you than being a tax collector. I want you to write. Same thing with Simon. You're a fisherman. I want you I wanted you to use that talent that I gave you and use it for something else. I want you to catch men instead. Because catching fish is the same thing as catching men. It's the same thing. That's what Jesus' parable was all about. It's the same thing. You take the good fish, the bad fish are thrown away. Same thing here. That's what's going to happen at the end of age, when the angels come. And all these little traits that the disciples have... Jesus saw that in them, and Jesus said, okay, you, your talent can be used, but not in the way that you think it could be, but for what God wants you to do. And that is very powerful, and that runs throughout this entire series, because again, like I said, the show is mainly focused on the apostles, which is fascinating because we've never really seen that before in movies and television. It's always about Jesus, and the disciples are always the same character. But here they have separate, they have individual characters, traits, storylines, and that's why I think one of the big reasons why a lot of people love this show, including me. So that's very noteworthy, and I love that, and I can relate to that. And that's all I have to say about I Saw You. And I will see you guys next week for episode three, which it's the shortest episode in season three, in season two. 
but it's one of the most powerful. I'll see you next week.